In an historic address from the Oval Office last night, President Joe Biden explained to Americans his decision to bow out of the presidential race. Biden also used the moment to move forward from his presidency and onto what he... Nothing, nothing can come in the way of saving our democracy. That includes personal ambition. So I've decided the best way forward is to pass the torch to a new generation. That's the best way to unite our nation. All right, let's go ahead and bring in NBC10 boss and political commentator Sue O'Connell. Sue, we heard Vice, Pre or Vice President, President Biden <laughs> praised Vice President Kamala Harris <laughs> last night, saying, quote, she's experienced, she's tough, she's capable, she's been an incredible partner to me and a leader for our country. What have you seen in the early days of her campaign that would lead the president to say that? Well, one of the more remarkable things that's happening, which he didn't mention, is that after years of dominating social media, Donald Trump has been pushed to the sidelines by Kamala Harris. Just a few days after announcing her run for president, there's a new poll showing her leading among young voters, 60 percent to Trump's 40 percent. And some of this is no doubt due to an explosion of do-it-yourself TikTok and social media videos made by just regular people who took what the Republicans thought might be insults, and instead these young people seized the coconut trees, the brat summer, the laugh, the dancing, and suddenly positive Kamala Harris content is everywhere, Corey, and make no doubt this is connecting with young voters. So these TikTok videos, for some, maybe the first time they're getting to know Kamala Harris since she ran for president back in 2019. Obviously, she served as vice president, but like many vice presidents, one in the spotlight very much. Mm -hmm. What other aspects of Harris are voters discovering now? Kamala Harris is a lawyer and was a prosecutor for three decades. So don't let the laugh and the coconuts fool you. While Harris has often been the first in the Biden administration, for example, to talk about how Israel is conducting the war against Hamas, yesterday she had, a, had some very strong words about the protest against Israel Prime Minister Benjamin, Benjamin Netanyahu's address to Congress. In a statement released today, she denounced the protesters who engaged in what she called despicable acts and dangerous hate-fueled rhetoric. And she went on to condemn the burning of the American flag. So over the next 102 days, voters are going to see the many, many sides of Kamala Harris. Let's jump to the other side of this race. Former President Donald Trump's campaign has had to pivot from Biden to Harris the whole softer tone thing yeah. that we were expecting. Uh, how's it going so far? Yeah, I remember I, I said that last week, and I said Trump seemed more subdued. Well, that's completely worn off last night in North Carolina. Trump said to supporters, quote, if you don't mind, I'm not going to be nice. Is that okay? Well, he then went on to call Harris the most incompetent and far-left vice president in history and said she was totally against the Jewish people. Just a little note, Harris's husband is Jewish. And J.D. Vance is having his own time over on the social media, and uh, not so much in a good way. He made these comments in 2021 to Tucker Carlson, quote, We are effectively run in this country by a bunch of childless cat ladies who are miserable at their own lives and the choices they've made, so they want to make the rest of the country miserable, too. End quote. Well, that clip has gone viral. And the response? People like Republican Megan McCain and friend star who doesn't like to be involved in politics, Jennifer Aniston, are criticizing him. And the Internet, Corey, I know you're dying for this. The Internet is just waiting to see if that most famous childless cat lady of all, say it with me, Taylor Swift, is going to weigh in on this. So stay tuned. Yeah, we'll see. Waiting on her endorsement. And then today I learned that Gen Z has its own Madonna already. Yes. So keep up. Bob. The, the, the more you know, I guess. <laughs> of course, Sue and I stay on top of local and presidential politics every Sunday on Ash Issue. Join me, her and Matt Pritchard and I right. for our latest episode this weekend. Due to the Olympics, the schedule's changed a little bit. It's still going to air, but it's going to be on NECN at noon, 2.30 and 5 on Sunday. You can also catch Ad Issue on all of our digital platforms as well.